The Technology Innovation Agency is crucial for putting the bioeconomy strategy into action by utilizing the nation's various natural resources, including animal and plant life. The agency's mandate is to encourage the creation and commercialization of inventions. For more on this, so we speak to the executive for bioeconomy at the Technology Innovation Agency, Dr. Buisile Pehani. Dr. Pehani, thank you so much for joining us this morning. A pleasure to have you on our program. Thank you very much and good morning to the listeners. You know, the idea of exploiting a country's resources for economic gain is not a new one, but I wonder how things differ when you're looking at it through a bioeconomy lens. Well, um, as, as far as we understand it, as a technology innovation agency, together with um, our shareholder department, the Department of Science Innovation, it is critical that as a country uh, we recognize that we have a bioeconomy that certainly has the potential to be exploited for the benefit of communities and even businesses in South Africa. Accordingly, you know, our response to this was in essence set up um, opportunities for funding and support of SMEs, higher, higher um, education institutions, as well as science councils, and afford them the opportunity to develop these innovations and take them through to the market through various commercialization avenues. So certainly we've seen that there's an opportunity for this to be exploited, to be supported a bit more, in essence to ensure that as a country we're able to contribute to the GDP of our country through the exploitation of the bioeconomy. Mm. Well, as a public entity, you know, with all of the innovation that we've been seeing, particularly in the health and, and agricultural sector, uh, how are you uh, essentially assisting or playing a role in growing South Africa's economy? Absolutely. So we've recognized that our higher education institutions and our science councils are in essence the source of innovations and solutions to these challenges. Um, and these are managed, of course, through their technology transfer offices with whom we have relationships. It is critical that as a country we're able to support our research base, uh, in other words, to support our scientists and innovators at these institutions and bring these solutions to the market. Of course, we don't do this alone. Together with our government, which is in essence responsible for laying the foundation and policy, and funding around the support and management of intellectual property through offices such as the National Intellectual Property Management Office. Of course, we also have relationships as well with regulatory bodies such as the South African Health Products Regulatory Agency. In essence, looking at ways through which we can guide the approval of medicines, for example. The Department of Trade, Industry and Competition certainly has a role in facilitating market access in foreign countries whilst protecting local industries from cheap imports. And, of course, our very own Department of Health has the responsibility to ensure that a local vaccine manufacturing, for example, is supported preferential, uh, through preferential procurement from the state. But various other players in the national system of innovation, our ecosystem, know their role and must play it. Mm. Well, the Technology Innovation Agency, Dr. Pehane, is in partnership this year with the BioAfrica Convention, a convention that started a few, a few days ago, if I'm not mistaken, and central to the convention is about the creation of new partnerships as well as the strengthening of, of old partnerships. Perhaps take us through some of uh, these partnerships and essentially how uh, they are aiming to assist sectors such as health, sectors such as agriculture in South Africa, and very interestingly as well, our indigenous-based technology sector, which is a sector that I wasn't even aware um, garnered that much attention. Certainly. So we certainly recognize that, you know, as, as a continent, we need to look, you know, to our indigenous knowledge holders, uh, considering that uh, we now take IKS, indigenous knowledge systems, as a very key pillar as far as economic and social development is concerned, particularly in our rural areas. Of course, we need, needed to make sure that, you know, as we support uh, our IKS holders, we ensure that, uh, you know, the science, of course, is supported uh, through uh, our, inv our investigators sitting at universities and other science councils, ultimately to ensure that when these um, extracts or these therapeutics make it to the market, they've been supported uh, by the leg regulatory authorities. Ultimately, our aim is to ensure that there is commercial mainstreaming and others were able to offer these uh, indigenous, indigenous knowledge uh, in retail centers uh, and also in hospitals. When people go in for treatment in hospitals, they must have the option uh, to be treated using indigenous knowledge uh, <clears throat> from plant extracts um, as well as some of these therapeutics from plants, shown to be safe and efficacious. 
Mm. As a country, we've also embarked on the development of a vaccine manufacturing strategy, uh, in essence looking to for ways that we can harness existing infrastructure and skills in the country to support vaccine manufacturing. This is critical considering what happened uh, during the last uh, pandemic of COVID, where we were found uh, as a continent not being able to produce our own vaccines and in essence relying on imports from other countries. Ultimately, it means that uh, together, you know, as, as we work together on the African continent, we look at ways to develop our clinical trials infrastructure, because indeed in South Africa and other African countries, we do have skills, we do have existing infrastructure, but the opportunity isn't really in, in harnessing all of this uh, and coordinating our support towards uh, infrastructure, uh, particularly uh, towards uh, cl um, um, clinical trials. What we understand is that you know, as a country and other countries as well on the continent, it's really an opportune, opportune moment now to look at uh, the development and support of additional satellite sites as far as clinical trials are concerned, uh, spe specifically in those underserved regions of the country and the continent in support of diversity, equity and inclusion. We've certainly witnessed as a country the consolidation of agriculture uh, by uh, the commercial players in this particular sector and a number of interventions will be discussed at the convention uh, to find ways through which we can include smallholder farmers who also aspire to be commercial farmers and to export uh, their produce into various international, con uh, international destinations. Mm. So, you know, as, as, as in partnership uh, with uh, the colleagues from, uh, the, you know, um, Africa Bio and together with the Bio Africa Convention, it's really an opportunity for us to come together as Africans, together with other partners from around the world, to think about how we can harness uh, what we have on the continent uh, how we can look at uh, various policies uh, and, 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 and various strategies such as the Bioeconomy Strategy of South Africa to find ways through which we can assist, um, assist one another, assist SMEs and assist the continent uh, ultimately to, to ensure that um, what we do within the bioeconomy space has an effect, a positive effect on our GDP as a continent. Mm. Well, Dr. Pahani, the sense that I'm getting from you is a lot of the work that the agency is doing uh, together with a lot of the partnerships that you've managed to, to strike up over the years is to harness all of this knowledge and, and innovative skills. And as you've, as you've already mentioned, sort of bring it out to the market. But given the disruptive nature of innovative technologies, I mean, how receptive are these markets, particularly uh, markets in the global north to developments that are coming out of the global south? So I think uh, for me, really, what we need to think about um, and in essence embrace as Africans is that indeed, you know, our research uh, and innovation on the continent is in essence world class. We're able to demonstrate every year that we're able to, um, you know, put out publications in a number of high impact journals which in essence makes us uh, a global player as far as this is concerned. Uh, we also have expertise in the country just in terms of being able to, to look at some of our patents, to see how we can patent uh, as a country and as a continent as well. So in my view, this makes us a, a formidable force as far as innovation is concerned and the ability to commercialize uh, these in innovations. Indeed, you know, we find that, you know, because we are now in essence playing in the global arena, it means that there will be other players in a similar space uh, who will also see Africa as a lucrative market uh, to, to commercialize the in innovations. Ultimately, it means that you know, as African governance, uh, governments, we, we, know we think about you know, allowing or not uh, this competition into, into our countries uh, to the detriment of existing uh, infrastructure, existing industries. And ultimately, it means then that uh, we need to be thinking aggressively around uh, you know, how we compete in the global space. Mm. One of the ways we can do this, of course, is to ensure that at the negotiation table, we have the right mix of, of skills, such that we're able to identify those opportunities and those technologies developed elsewhere in the, in the world that we can bring in very quickly into the country, develop our skills, and support that with, with infrastructure from government. Mm. And ultimately, it means that we're able to backward integrate uh, and, in essence, uh, be a familiar force as far as uh, commercialization of these innovations is concerned. Mm. I mean, from our conversation alone, I mean, there's so much uh, to learn and to glean from this convention. What can attendees uh, basically look forward to? You've mentioned what small local farmers can gain from attending the convention, but other uh, stakeholders and role players in other sectors, what can they look forward to? Yes. So the convention is a convention of innovators, key opinion leaders, funders, African government representatives, scholars and academics coming to Durban, South Africa to engage in dialogues on the role of biotechnology um, in, in social and economic upliftment 
of, of countries and the continent at large. But ultimately, we're looking to find ways through which uh, we can start collaborating more closely as African countries, because ultimately what it is, is really about, uh, you know, an increase to our GDP as a continent and being able to come up with these technologies that we can use, firstly for ourselves, uh, but also to be able to export this technology to around the world uh, for income generation. So certainly looking forward to this dialogue, uh, and we certainly welcome uh, people to join us uh, online for this dialogue. Dr. Pahani, thank you so much for joining us. That's Executive for Bioeconomy at the Technology Inform In Innovation Agency, Dr. Vuisilet Pahani.